guys, this is Ash, and you're watching Write a Gash. So, today I'm doing a book talk on We Free the Stars. We Free the Stars is the second book in the We Hunt the Flame series, and it picks up where We Hunt the Flame leaves off and follows the Zumra through their journey beyond We Hunt the Flames. If you haven't read We Hunt the Fl Flames, please read that first before you watch this video. And I would also suggest reading this book before you watch this video. Um, but if you have read it, so it basically picks off right after the ex escape, the Sar, the Shar or Sar, um, and are on their way back to, well, on their way back home with the hearts, which sounds weird to say when you hear it. Um, but they also left Altair behind because he gets like they've left him behind and they're kind of dealing with the guilt of that and trying to figure out everything and Zafira is feeling the effects of being bound to be Javarat and Nasir is dealing with finding out that his father is under the control of the lion and they basically are on their way back and trying to free magic which we free the stars i think that's why the title is that um but now that we've talked about it everything else is spoilery and yeah so if you haven't read this book re read it before watching this video um so first i want to say i would give this book a three out of five star um like we hunt the flames i just had a disconnect with this book I think it was the way it was written rather than anything else now that I'm thinking more about it I, when I was reading it the first time I'm like okay maybe it's the characters and while I do like the characters more in this book but there was just something preventing me from connecting with this book um and I can't put my finger on it really I think it would be a fantastic book for most people it just wasn't it for me I I will say one plus side of this book is that Zafira and Nasir's relationship felt a lot more organic here, but also it didn't develop at the end. It left like it, again, it was like the zero to hundred. Like we get like the tension and blah blah blah, but they're never they don't officially get together, but are married at the end. Like what? There was just a lot of things that were disconnected for me. I would be reading a scene and I'd be like, what the fuck is going on? And this book put me in a full-on reading slump. And I honestly thought it was because of the sheer amount of books I had been reading lately. Until I was like, okay, I'm going to take a little bit of time off from this book. And then I started reading Tokyo Ever After. And I got done with that in a day. So it wasn't that I was just burnt out. It was just, I couldn't get into this book. Speaking of Tokyo Ever After, I did not go into that expecting to love it as much as I did and I felt like fucking loved it. But back to this, the characters were still great. The plot was a little more confusing. I think for me in the first book, the plot was great. The characters were like meh here. It flipped, I like the characters more, and the plot felt hollow to me. It just wasn't it. Um, so we, like I mentioned in the non-spoilery section, we start off where we leave off and they're on their way to like, I think Seraphin, if I'm pronouncing the place right. Saracen. So they're on their way to Saracen um, and they meet up with other Safis on the way, one of whom is Benjamin's wife, Aya, and Aya also has La um, Zafira's little sister, Lana, with her, who has been helping La Aya heal people and has become an apprentice of sorts and they kind of just, you know, there was just a lot of like dull points and Zafira really struggles with like the Javada kind of thing in her head influencing her and 
it gets to the point where she kills one of the caliphs and honestly god he de fucking deserved it he was an awful man he had spent his entire life making people hate women taking away the rights of women destroying their futures just because he was a bigoted asshole so like i'm good i'm gonna be honest <laughs> um but that really impacted her and kind of caused her to leave her group and embark on her own thing um nasir joins her and they kind of have a few moments along the road like i said it just wasn't connected like when they were together if like it felt like a romance but then none of the scenes felt connected to each other like especially like it did it like there was a build-up but there was never any fruition to the build-up I will say this book had great build up for these two characters, romance, storyline. And in the end, like she leaves and then she comes back. There is no like actual conversation between them. There is no communication. And she just comes back and she's like, oh, I heard um, Saracen needs a new Khalifa. And like, okay. Okay, why are we jumping around so much? Why can't you connect certain things to each other? It was all in one chapter. Like, I don't get it what happened at the end. Like, <sighs> anyway, let's talk about um, some of the other things that happened. So, Zafira finds out her mother had died saving other people, and that's something she tries to come to terms with. She also, like, sees her little sister in a different light for the first time she sees her be this like confident person who was willing to kind of also kind of fierce and slightly scary person lana's kind of scary um but yeah so she's adjusting to that also speaking of Zafira's past yasmin i really disliked yasmin in this book like no what the no honestly like even in book one i never felt a friendship between the two it always felt like yasmin wanted zafira to fit the mold she was in like she wanted zafira to change and be okay with the typical life of a woman in their world and it wasn't who zafira was and like yasmin does like say stuff like kind of she like really attacks Zafira for what happened to Dean and it was a little unfair because like Zafira never asked Dean to go with her. Dean was just a typical guy who didn't care what anyone else wanted. He just did what he wanted. I it just I didn't feel any pity for so many of these characters even when they were hurt so badly. Like when she lost her husband, I was like, okay, it happened. I'm like, mm. so there wasn't a connection like between me and the characters or even like this like sister of my heart stuff. Like, I don't feel like you actually care about each other. That's my impression of these two women in this book. Zafira had more of a friendship with Githa than she had with Yasmin. And it was that way before Zafira left Demihun anyway. So I'm like, how are you guys supposed to convince me that you guys are like sisters? When, like, you know, they didn't feel like family to me. And uh, speaking of Kitha, I really liked Kitha's character in the first book. And she became a background character in this book almost like she wasn't as prominent of a character and she didn't have a storyline i was at the end of the last book it, i got the impression that maybe we'd get to learn more about kitha her story storyline see her achieve something as well almost everyone else in the zomra had a great progress except for kitha kitha 
but when I say that, I don't mean Kifa's character didn't have a good ending. Like, I love that Kifa's character ended up being the captain of the Sultan or whatever she ended up being. And that is exactly where she needs to be. But I wanted to see that journey more. I wanted to see personal growth for Kifa, which we didn't get. We did get that for Altair. I think in the series, Altair was the most well-written character and the most likable character. And Altair becoming Sultan was just chef's kiss. That was the best thing that could have happened in this book. Nasir never should have been Sultan and him giving Altair the throne was the best decision he made. But also him becoming a caliph also didn't make sense to me. To me, it would have made more sense if neither Zafira or Nasir were in a leadership position in that capacity. Like if they were more advisors to Altair, that would have made sense. Because they seem like adventurers. I feel like they would have explored the world. That would have been a more satisfying ending for them rather than them just becoming Caliph and Khalifa. <sighs> anyway, so I don't know what else to talk about this book. Like I said, there were very little things that stood out to me. Everything kind of melted into the background, which is why I was really struggling with this book. <laughs> I know this book is so near and dear to so many people. And honestly, I see the potential. It just, I struggle with it so much. I struggle connecting with this world. It's just, yeah, I don't even know how to say things right now. But I'm going to end by saying it wasn't a bad book. It was, it had great potential. I do think it felt a little short on execution. But I think just because I didn't like it doesn't mean so many other people won't. I think you should give it a shot. So I would still recommend it. I would just say it wouldn't be something I would ever pick up again. Anyway, so that is it for the book talk. I hope you guys do give this series a shot. And if you did read this series, please tell me what do you think about it because I would love to hear your thoughts and see if maybe I'm missing something because I feel like this world is just so beautiful. I am not giving it what it deserves and I feel bad about that but also I don't know what else like I tried my best to like go into the second book without any preconceptions based on the first I tried my best to like it um, it's just it fell short for me but I would love to hear your thoughts and I will see you all later bye